So what would you say if I said, yes, you are absolutely ready to start your personal concierge business? That make you freak out a little bit? Look, maybe you're not quite ready. Maybe there's some ducks that you have to get lined up. But in today's video, I am here to tell you what you do need, but most importantly, what you don't need to start your personal concierge business. Now, I regularly have a lot of prospective personal concierge businesses telling me that they're getting organized, they're getting ready, but they're just not quite ready to start their personal concierge business. Sometimes it's for a legitimate reason, but often they are just trying to get everything done, everything perfect, everything that they think a real business should have done before they can start a business. But I'm here to tell you that you're probably making it a little bit more complicated than you need to, and that starting a personal concierge business, especially, is a lot easier than you think to start. So first of all, I'm going to tell you what you do need, and then I'm going to tell you what you don't need, and I'm going to give you some tips on what you need to do to finally launch your personal concierge business. <coughs> <coughs> so yes, you need a mobile phone. That's pretty crucial and probably the main device that I use constantly for my business. It would be good to have a computer or an iPad, a tablet, but even that's not vital, although I do love working from a laptop. I find it much easier, but you could do everything on your smartphone if you have one. You also definitely need a car and a driver's license because unless you're looking at offering an entirely virtual service, generally a personal concierge is out on the road helping their clients, meeting them at their offices, at their homes, or just doing all the errand running and different tasks that your clients need you to do while they're at work. So a car is pretty important. I definitely suggest looking into some basic insurance before you start. That is usually some form of liability insurance. It's different for every region, every country. So I do recommend going and speaking with an insurance broker. Getting insurance for a personal concierge business can be tricky. I will be posting a video with my tips on what to think about when trying to get insurance. But just keep in mind that it can be tricky. So be realistic in the types of services that you want to offer when you're starting out, because that is what can cause a few hiccups with insurance. But definitely have some form of insurance for your peace of mind and also your client's peace of mind. And then finally, you should have some basic pricing set it, set up. Usually that would just be a standard hourly rate. It could be some packages. It could even be a membership, but don't get too worried about that. When you start out, you need to have your price to test the market because I will be telling you right now that you'll be pretty quickly, usually increasing your price and changing your pricing model a bit. So don't try and make it too complicated now. I generally say just set an hourly rate. My tip is to assess what cleaners in your local area are charging and charge slightly more than them. That's just my kind of baseline reference point. There's a lot more that can go into it, but to make it easy, that's a good way to start. And then have some basic terms and conditions and a form for them to sign. You can get a complicated contract document prepared by a lawyer if you have the funds for that. Um, you, We do have some templates in the Concierge Secret Society membership um, with some examples of what I use and what some other businesses have used. So that, but obviously you need to get your own professional advice. But to start with, just be really clear on what your pricing is, what your terms are, cancellations, um, the hours that you're operating, the types of things you will and won't do, and how they pay for the time, the hours, your services, and also any purchases that you are making on their behalf. So make it really clear, but as with everything, it can all be changed and added to as you go and getting started is the best way to learn. So no, you don't need a website. 
Lots of people spend a lot of time and money on getting their website up before they start. But websites can be costly if you're not building it yourself. And in this day and age, it's not an automatic prerequisite. Yes, it's something you should be striving for, but no, I don't think that you need one when you start up. I do think you need a Facebook page, a business Facebook page, so not your personal profile, a business Facebook page. That can be your website. It's a free platform that you can put your business page on. Now, there's a lot of talk about whether Facebook's the right place, the wrong place, and that's for you to learn as you start your business. But for now, it's a great place to start to put all your information and to be able to share with your friends and family. If you're completely against Facebook, then possibly a website is what you need um, and you need to look into that. But for everyone else, I would highly recommend just starting a business Facebook page. You don't need to have lots of fancy software. You don't need accounting a software. You don't need a customer relationship management platform. You don't need an email distribution software. All of that you can get later. Some of those things are free, but I and, and if you're interested in them, if you think you need them and you're willing to sign up to the free version, go for it. But you don't need to go and spend all this money on all the fancy things. You can use Word, Excel, Google Docs, Google Sheets, whatever it is that you've got, you can use that. In fact, we still do our timesheets in an Excel spreadsheet. There's probably a fancier, better software to use, but for the way that we work in our business at the moment and all the things that we're juggling, frankly, an Excel spreadsheet for our timesheets is what we need and it's what we use. We do have accounting software, but we didn't have that to start with. We did a lot of things in Excel, created invoices in Excel, it was all, you know, all fairly simple. So just keep it simple. Please don't go and spend a lot of money on fancy software when you start out. No, you don't need to have signage on your car. No, you don't have to have lots of fancy flyers and brochures printed. That costs money and it's not as, you know, common these days, especially flyers and brochures, to have that all printed. Most things people are accessing online and I'm going to be controversial but you don't even need to go and print lots of fancy business cards. You can share your contact on your phone, most people are online, you can take their details and email them. If you think your particular ideal client absolutely demands business cards then go for it, use it. But I don't think you need to have it and I've also heard a lot of um, entrepreneurs who are a lot more um, successful than I am are also saying the same thing. Don't go and spend your money on cards. You never know, you might change things. You might change your title, your business name, your phone number, your address, lots of things may change. So unless you really want to have some business cards, that's just one thing you can cross off your list quite frankly. Now you don't need to have lots of forms and templates and procedures set up. At the start of your business, you might think you know what services you're going to offer, but often your first clients will ring you and ask for services that you have not even thought of. So if you've got spare time, great. Start making forms, start creating them, but do that after you launch your business while you're in a quiet spot, in a lull, create that after. Now I'm not talking about your client agreement that I mentioned before. I certainly think you need something like that for clients to sign, but the rest of it, you can do after you've launched. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, a big thing that a lot of concierge do is try and get vendors or suppliers all lined up before they start. They wanna find the best plumber, the best cleaners, the best electrician. That's another thing that you can start doing after you have started. Because one, you may not have anyone that needs an electrician for the first year that you're in business. And the other thing that we find regularly is that we either find suppliers that don't do a great job and we don't want to use anymore, or they are so good that they get so busy and so we have to find another person. So you're constantly having to find and source suppliers and vendors. Quite often your clients also have their preferred suppliers anyway, they just want you to liaise with them. So don't spend lots of time thinking that you need to have all of these people lined up before you start. You don't. Now look, if you hear of a great cleaner, if you hear of a great plumber, whatever it is, yeah, lock that into your memory bank, have their details recorded in an Excel spreadsheet ready for you to get in touch with. 
And if you want to while you're starting, it's not a bad idea to go and meet some people for coffee and just have a chat because that's also a great way of networking and sharing your business. But the message for this video is what you need to do before you start. And finding all your supplies and vendors is not one of those things. And finally, you don't need to have clients already. In fact, most people are not going to have clients or really any way of finding their first client. You need to launch, tell pe as many people as you can about what you're doing. Perhaps like I did when I started, do a few small jobs for friends and family so that you can get a feel for how it actually works. You can get their feedback, even their testimonials, but you don't need to have clients lined up before you go. Now, I think you might be thinking, well, of course, I know that, Abby, but I've had conversations with people who think that they need to have clients before they can say that they are a business looking for clients. So, you know, chicken before the egg, just launch your business. So now I'm gonna tell you, once you've got the stuff that you do need set up, your phone, your, your Facebook page, your insurance, your client forms, then launch, please launch. Press publish on that Facebook page and invite all your friends and families to like it. Tell as many people as you can about what you're doing. Perhaps you've worked in an industry in the past which would be a great fit for your services or people would love to hear what you're doing so that they can potentially refer you. Go and organise those coffee meetings or those Zoom video calls. Start getting out there and telling people what you are doing. Now, in this day and age, it can be a little bit harder, but it is getting easier to head out to networking events. And I really encourage you to go and book your very first networking event go to a business um, commerce association, um, a local business networking group, look online, look on meetup.com. But for most people, the idea of going to a networking event, especially those first few, is really hard. So I want you to rip the bandaid off, book it in and go. And my tip, number one tip for networking is to go up and talk to someone who, who is also standing alone and perhaps looking a bit nervous. It's the great, greatest way to start but definitely go and book in that networking event. So it really is as simple as that. Please don't make it more complicated. It is, this is what you really wanna do. If a personal concierge business is your dream, is your goal for your life, then just do it. Tick those few things off that you need to get done and please then just go and start your business. The absolute best thing that you can do is be learning while you're in business learning what forms you need, learning how to communicate with your clients, learning about what the suppliers and vendors are that they need. But the only way you can do that is to get out and do it. So stop being afraid, stop being nervous, stop thinking you have to have everything perfect and just do it. So I want you to let me know in the comments below, have you started your business? If not, what do you need to do to get started? And then please tell me, when you've launched. Comment and come back and say, I've launched, here's my Facebook page, Abby. Look at this, I'm ready to go. Good luck on starting your own personal concierge business.